Hello, I'm going to demonstrate how to construct a fully parametric model in Revit of something like the image we can see, which is a railway station in Lisbon designed by Santiago Calatrava. And uh, I think you will agree that that's pretty impressive. So let's see if we can put this together as quickly as possible. So what we're doing is we're starting with an adaptive component and I'm going to place a point on the level work plane and because you can't actually snap to an intersection in a 3D view when placing points, I'm going to have to use the align tool to do that. Then I'm going to select the point, make that adaptive then set the uh, work plane to be the horizontal plane of that point and then we'll place another point on top of the first one and we then need to select that point and drag it up. Now that point should actually be hosted on the first one by doing that and then we will create a reference line that links the two points, but the first thing I've got to do is check that 3D snapping is on, otherwise it won't link the points properly. So I'm going to start at the top point, go down to the bottom one, which might just save me an extra step later on. So then I'm going to place another point onto the reference line and another one. And then press escape. Now when I select the top point, it has an offset value here and I'm going to associate that to a parameter called height. And then I'm going to change its reference planes properties to show always. And I'm going to pick this upper one of those two points make that also show always and I'm going to change its measurement type from this rather cryptic normalized curve parameter to chord length. Now chord length actually just means length in this case because the host that it is on is a straight line but it could be a curve or an arc or whatever that reference, plan, that reference line in which case the measurement would be literally a chord across there. And it now has a parameter called chord length. So I'm going to associate that to a parameter called perimeter drop. And the last point, I'll select that, make that a chord length as well, and set that to valley drop and you'll notice that the measurement is from the beginning and that's because I chose to draw the line from the top downwards. If I'd drawn it the other way I would have had to come in and measure from and change that to end. Okay so now we want to draw a couple of reference circles and we're going to host those on the upper two points. So set the work plane, snap to the first circle, draw out, and I'm going to turn that into a dimension. Then I'm going to set the work plane of the lower of those two points. Draw another circle. and turn that into a dimension as well and we should be able to turn that into a label for radius outside and turn this one to a label for radius inside and 
we are now going to select the top circle and basically we want to have a number of points on the circle we could manually place a whole bunch of points and then set them at equal distances all the way around but it's much easier to use the divide path tool and I actually want eight points and I pick the lower circle divide path and change that to eight points as well now that's our rig created for one of the columns in the structure and we'd better just check that some of the parameter settings are actually behaving themselves so let's change a few things so we'll change the height to eight meters the whole thing should move up, yes it does change it back to 6 meters just so that we can see it on screen change the inside radius I'm going to make that 1 meter and you'll see that we have a formula there for the outside radius so that they are actually proportional to each other and we'll change the valley drop there to 3 meters and we'll change the perimeter drop to 1500 just to test it so you can see that all those parameters are working so the next step will be to create some roof panels and uh, we will do that shortly